a co-president of the Europe of Freedom and Democracy, Nigel Farage. The floor is yours. Well, here we are, on the edge of a financial and social disaster, and in the room today we have the four men who were supposed to be responsible. And yet we've listened to the dullest, most technocratic speeches I've ever heard. You are all in denial. By any objective measure, the euro is a failure. And who is actually responsible? I mean, who's in charge out of you lot? Well, of course, the answer is none of you, because none of you have been elected. None of you actually have any democratic legitimacy for the roles that you currently hold within this crisis. And into this vacuum, albeit reluctantly, has stepped Angela Merkel. And we are now living, we are now living in a German-dominated Europe. Something that the European project was actually supposed to stop. Something that those that went before us actually paid a heavy price in blood to prevent. I don't want to live in a German-dominated Europe, and nor do the citizens of Europe. But you guys have played a role. Because when Mr Papandreou got up and used the word referendum, or Mr Wren, you described it as a breach of confidence, and your friends here got together like a pack of hyenas, rounded on Papandreou, had him removed and replaced by a puppet government. What an absolutely disgusting spectacle that was. And not satisfied with that, you decided that Berlusconi had to go. So he was removed and replaced by Mr Monti, a former European Commissioner, a fellow architect of this Euro disaster, and a man who wasn't even a member of the Parliament. It's getting like an Agatha Christie novel, where we're trying to sort of work out who's the next person that's going to be bumped off. The difference is we know who the villains are. You should all be held accountable for what you've done. You should all be fired. And I have to say, Mr Van Rompuy, 18 months ago when we first met, um, I was wrong about you. I said you'd be the quiet assassin of nation-state democracy, but you're not anymore. You're rather noisy about it, aren't you? You, an unelected man, went to Italy and said, this is not the time for elections, but the time for actions. What in God's name gives you the right to say that to the Italian people? Thank you. Then